As soon as Gujarat is over, there are new set of elections which the government is focusing on and these are key because remember before 2019, if the ruling party said that they have a focus area, it's those seats that they don't have, the South and the Northeast. And the Northeast key person for the BJP is Minister of State for Home Affairs, Kiran Rijiju, who's now got additional responsibility. Kiran Rijiju, thanks so much for speaking to NDTV. I just want to first talk about the Northeast because the Northeast seems to be an area which the BJP is really focusing on. When you look at Nagaland, Nagaland, and at the moment, since last, since 2014, you've gained so many states as well. Um, uh, you know, there are only, I think, two states out of the seven which are not with you. What yeah. is the big focus there? When you, when, what is the brief that you've got from your party leadership as you go into heading uh, and handling Nagaland? See, uh, as you rightly mentioned, that uh, BJP is now uh, making its inroad into Northeast like never before. Mm. The next election, which is due in last part of February or the first early part of uh, March 2018, mm. is the election of uh, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Nagaland, and the state of uh, Karnataka. We are very clear. We will go all out to ensure that BJP takes over entire Northeast. The reason for me to feel that BJP must take over entire Northeast is simply because for last 70 years, the Congress and other political parties have failed to ensure the prosperity for the people of Northeast. See, remember, Northeast is the richest region in this nation. It's a water surplus mineral surplus, fertile land, most forest covered region in the country. In every sense, it is naturally gifted region of India, yet it remains most backward. This is something it is unacceptable. So with, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's rigorous vision of transforming Northeast by enacting the act policy, if we don't perform well politically, It'll, it will be a crisis for us that Prime Minister is doing such a great thing. Amit Shah Ji has given, laid down a strong um, uh, you know, line of action for all of us. We must perform, and we, if we perform politically, then it is good for the people of Northeast. So I, I see there's a direct connect. Direct connect, but you know, it's a really challenging one. <clears throat> Manik Sarkar in Tripura, which is the next election, yes. He has been there for decades now, yes. unchallenged. Yes. How is the BJP hoping to unseat him? Manik Sarkar was unchallenged before because it was Manmohan Singh government in Delhi. The, the main battle was with the Congress party. Now, it is different ball game. It is Narendra Modi's government. It is uh, Amit Shah's led BJP. And it is the committed team of BJP workers who are going to take on Manik Sarkar, let CPM government in Tripura. Mm. So it's not going to be easy for them because we are very clear. When we go for any kind of uh, election campaign, we go with full conviction yeah. and with full commitment. The CPM, Gunda Girdi, be it in uh, Kerala, or in Tripura or erstwhile in West Bengal needs to be fought tooth and nail and it can be done by BJP. That's what we feel. And Tripura, you uh, trust me, Manik Sarkar government in Tripura will be voted out this time because his opponent is now BJP, not Congress. But but it, doesn't he also have similarities in the sense that he's also known to be a man of modest means, a humble man? That's his personality. That, I'm not attacking. I'm not attacking but this kind of personal, personal character. I know, but this kind of personality is also, you know, what the prime minister, what the BJP boasts about the prime minister that you know you have to. He comes from a humble origin. That is the winning game. That that may not work. No, no. Right? See, try to understand, yeah. Modi ji has come from a humble background. Yeah. That is his, um, you know, social background. Right. But 
his political credibility is his performance, right. governance. As a chief minister, he performed in Gujarat, elected repeatedly. That is how he has been elected by the nation as a whole to be the prime minister of this country. So Manik Sarkar's personality, his humble background, these are his personal character. I'm not going to attack on that. But he has not performed in terms of delivery of good governance to the people has not happened. That is the point where we are going to cash on. But in Nagaland, Nagaland is a very complicated state, yes. very difficult state. And uh, there, as I said, BJP had won only one seat in the last election. Yeah. And uh, uh, of course, NPF is our partner. They are, they are in the government. And um, there were few uh, Congress MLAs who won from Congress ticket. Now, they all have joined the regional party. Now, my, my challenge before me immediately is to retain NDA government, but the presence of the BJP must be enhanced. We are not going to throw out our uh, po political ally. They are our trusted ally. Okay. We will maintain that relationship. But, to we, but we have to enhance the presence of BJP, which is absolutely necessary because BJP is a stabilizing factor and BJP will be the party to push Nagaland and the Northeast into the uh, League of uh, Prosperity. Which is what you did in Assam yeah. in 2016. You, no one expected the BJP to suddenly come there on the scene and form a majority government. But is one of your promise getting you into trouble in Assam right now, Kiran Rijiju? No, we are, we are very much committed to all the promises we have given. But the promise of saying that you will keep into consideration uh, the, uh, to naturalize the Hindu migrants who came there, is that creating a problem now in Assam? See, the issue of migrants, that was a BJP the, the issue of migrants must be understood from a very clear perspective. Who are refugees? The refugees are those who have been forced to go out of their home. Right. And when they have no alternative, say for religious persecution or whatever, if they have no alternative place to survive, so they go to another place, so they are provided refuge. So they become the refugees. Yes. So the International Convention of Refu on Refugee also provides certain things, though we are not signatory to the, right. uh, the, the International Convention on Refugees. But India has been the most considerate nation on this regard. Illegal immigrants are those people who are unwanted. They surreptitiously get into our territory without any valid document, without any yeah. reason. Yeah. So, you, you have to treat illegal immigrants differently from the refugees. Refugees do not come on their own. They are pushed out. They are yes. thrown out. So that is how we have to look That's at it. That's what Rohingyas also said. Rohingyas are not our uh, immediate neighbors. But they were also pushed out. That is, they have come from Myanmar to Bangladesh. And then come over here. Yeah, So, but, but Rohingya issue is we have already spelled out clearly. I know. Okay, I don't want to get into yeah. the Rohingya issue right now. I am talking about the Hindu migrants. Yeah. BJP in its, in its uh, policy, in its election, and the center also said that you will give, you will, all those people, even if they came after 1971, if they are Hindus and they are fleeing Bangladesh, they will be given no. shelter <coughs> please, over here. Please. Isn't that creating a problem for the indigenous people in Assam? They no, are please protesting. Please understand this thing, that indigenous people's right has to be protected. There's no denying in that. And BJP is committed to protect the interests of the indigenous people. That cannot be diluted. But when it comes to giving shelter, then you have to understand that the illegal immigrants are to be treated differently from a genuine refugee. Are you worried as a home minister about the our concern is to, to about the communally sensitive because you know Assam has seen <coughs> communal tension before. Of course, we are. I know are, you have moved about thirty thousand troops already in, in we anticipation. Are, we are very, very much uh, uh, you know careful. Yeah. Uh, in in ensuring that the peaceful atmosphere is not vitiated by any means. 
that is the priority of any any minister or any government yeah so we we are very mindful of that but right now our chief minister mr sonowal and the government in assam is doing a good job they are uh, taking care of everything and i think that we will manage the situation so today the big story of course which is coming out is um you know and everybody seems to be really outraged about it sir is the kind of treatment that has been uh, meted out to kulbhushan jadhav's wife and mother how india was promised a meeting between on humanitarian grounds but do you think it was a humanitarian gesture well uh, pakistan claims so but uh, from india's side our um, foreign ministry is uh, carefully uh, pursuing this matter carefully uh, looking after the whole issue and i'm sure uh, the whole world sees uh, the evil design of pakistan and pakistan's uh, nefarious activities are being exposed before the international community so this particular case of uh, kulbhushan jadhav also i think ultimately the the stand taken by india hmm. will will win and pakistan will get exposed